Good afternoon and welcome to worship with Crescentville and Frankfurt Memorial United Methodist Churches. This is a special Sunday today. It's our anniversary recognition Sunday. And you probably noticed behind uh, uh, Sue Creevy, a banner that says 150 years. And uh, on the other side, it says 100 years. That's in recognition of the two churches. And you'll be hearing about this later on. Uh, Frankfurt Memorial's church is 150 years old this year. And Crescentville United Methodist Church is 100 years old. Uh, Randy is going to be with us this morning, Pastor Randy. And that's the, the big news. He is going to be bringing the message for this recognition Sunday. Um, after the services, at the end of the service, after the benediction, if you would like to stay on and uh, wish Randy or wish each other a happy anniversary, uh, there will be time and it would be a good time to do that. In the way of announcements, uh, I'm going to be away for a couple of weeks. And, and so uh, Sophie Lewis will be bringing the message next week and the week after that. And uh, so please be sure uh, Sophie is studying for the ministry. And uh, I, I think you're going to enjoy the message that she has for us. So uh, remember this next week and the week after. If you need uh, pastoral uh, care or anything like that, call the office. They have the number that Reverend Ron Stott is on standby and uh, uh, he will be able to uh, take care of any pastoral needs while I'm away. So remember that we will be doing our Bible study this Wednesday at seven o'clock. We invite you to join us. Uh, we are talking about the Lord's Prayer and studying this as we work our way through it. Uh, at Frankfurt Memorial United Methodist Church, the office will be open this week on Monday and Friday, um, 8.30 to 1 o'clock. And so Pat Raymond wanted you to know that. So uh, if you're planning on going to, into the office, they are the times. Now, in the way of other things that we have going on, uh, and we had an anniversary yesterday, a good one. Uh, Hank and Eva Baumgartel celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary yesterday, October the 24th. Um, we have birthdays this week. Uh, tomorrow, Phyllis Mazaitis is, uh, has a birthday. And then on Tuesday, Rose Abwat, Lynn Wharton, and on Thursday, Kim Farrer and Peter Hansen. And uh, so if you do, wish them all a happy birthday. And I will say happy birthday and happy anniversary. And if I missed anyone, happy your birthday or anniversary anyway. Uh, I would like to ask Sue Snyder to uh, talk now and tell us what the, what the results were from yesterday's flea market at Crescentville. All right. Well, first off, I want to make sure I thank everybody who had anything to do with the flea market, from helping set up to carrying up tables to putting out everything. It was a real challenge because we've never quite done it that way outside. But you know what? We had the best help and the people came and, you know, it was just amazing all in all. And we even lucked out with the weather. So thank you. Thank you to everybody that had anything to do with it. And we made, we think at this point, $925. So woohoo! <laughs> Thank you very much, Sue. That is fantastic. Let us get started now with our chorus of welcome, the family of God. You will notice we say brother and 
sister round here It's because we're a family And these folks are so near When one has a heartache We all share the tears And rejoice in his victory In this family so dear I'm so glad I'm a part Thank you. It's great. We really are the family of God. And let us now join together in our call to worship. How I love your house, O oh Lord. I want to be there. I long to be in the courts of the Lord's house, to sing with joy to the loving God. One day spent in your house is better than a thousand anywhere else. The Lord is our protector and glorious King, blessing us with kindness and honor. He listens and helps those who call upon him. Blessed are those who put their trust in you, Lord God Almighty. Because of your unfailing love and mercy, we will sing praises to you, O God of our salvation. And our opening hymn is, O God, our help in ages past. Now will you join me in our opening prayer? Gracious God, as we gather to remember our past and rejoice in our present, we also look forward with eager eyes to the future. We pray that you would continue to make your love known among us and that you would help us to look beyond our walls so that we would continue striving to reflect the communities around us. Make our churches a blessing to all, we pray, and embolden us to move forward with strength toward what lies ahead. These things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we'll have our children's message, and this morning we are blessed to have Naima Jabadi, who's going to bring the message. Good morning. Today's children's message binds with the concept of self-giving love and taking the decision of following God's words. In Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39, it says, Jesus replied, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. We can see this message in our everyday lives and through the things we do. We have many people around us that care and love us. So it is our duty to reciprocate that love and share it and share that towards them. Even when we don't want to, we should be reminded that this is what God sees as the best way to spread his love and his message to, to others. Through you, you're able to make a great change, which is why we ought to love our neighbors as ourselves. We should love God with everything that we are. He does many things for us. And considering this, we are able to commit our lives to him. With this love that we have, we do things through him, whether it be our desires, our feelings, our purposes, we bring, we bring everything under his control while we fulfill his great commandment. Thank you, Naima. That was great. And, and a message that we all, I think, need to hear, not just the young people, but uh, thank you again. That, that was beautiful. Under joys and concerns this morning, uh, remember the family of uh, Juanita Jean, Jean Jacques Jean's mother, passed away this last week. Uh, keep Lindsay Farrell in prayer. Emma Cuddy Hall, Kathy Lynch, uh, she's having financial difficulties and they're making her very stressed. And then keep in prayer the elections that we have going on right now in the United States, but also in, in other places in the world and particularly thinking of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So keep everything in prayer and God bless you all. Will you join me now as we pray together? Heavenly Father, holy is your name. Your presence is the goal we reach for. Your closeness is the foundation we build on. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your gift to us, your son who you loved. And Heavenly Son, thank you for the sacrifice you made for us giving up your life on earth so we could have life eternal, new life in your presence, Father and Son, along with the Holy Spirit. Lord, for now you have brought your people together in neighborhoods with common interests, a feeling of welcome, a sense of belonging, an attitude of joy and hope and love, a deepening of our faith a strengthening of our fellowship. We are your congregations. Today, we are celebrating the lives, the faith, the sacrifices of those who came before us to build for their future, the future that today is us. Now we are the builders for the next future. Guide us. We come together personally when we can, virtually when we cannot, spiritually in all circumstances. We are the church. We come to worship and we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray. And today we are going to have the hymn, Lord's Prayer. Oh, 
a long time ago, 150, 100 years ago, men and women of faith came together and built a church. Not just the building, although the buildings became a place to gather, the primary focus was on Jesus Christ, the savior for them and all who would follow them. They made an investment, not just for themselves, but also for others who they did not know. Those original investors are all gone now to a place where life is new and life is forever. We receive the benefits of their investment. And now it is our turn to reinvest for others. Your tithes, your gifts, your offerings are our reinvestment in the church for now and for the future. Through our programs, our missions and our witness, we are carrying on what those faith builders started here. They were generous with their resources. We need to follow their example. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of your people. Our generosity is made easy by the program of online giving. And for Crescentville, our first donations via online giving can be doubled this month. But we still appreciate those not confident with this new technology who prefer, who prefer mail or drop off. Lord, bless all gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn now is, Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place, but right now we are especially thankful for the presence of Pastor Randy, who will bring us our gospel lesson and our message this morning. Thank you, Pastor Bob. And thank you, the people of Frankfurt Memorial and Crescentville United Methodist Churches. It's good to see you in this virtual way that we're continuing to 
to worship. It's good to be together in this strange way. Um, please do know that you have not been forgotten over these weeks, but if anything, you have been thought of even more uh, in, in gratitude and thanks because so many ways you have supported me through your prayers and your cards and your, your good words. And I, I'm so grateful for that. And I thank you. Our scripture lesson for this morning is from the book of First Peter, chapter 2, verses 4 through 12. Now you are coming to him as a living stone, even though this stone was rejected by humans, from God's perspective, it is chosen, valuable. You yourselves are being built like living stones into a spiritual temple. You are being made into a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Thus, it is written in the scripture, look, I am laying a cornerstone in Zion, chosen, valuable. The person who believes in him will never be shamed. So God honors you who believe. For those who refuse to believe, through the, though the stone the builders tossed aside has become the capstone. This is a stone that makes, pos, that makes people stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Because they refuse to believe in the word, they stumble. Indeed, this is the end to which they were appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possession. You have become this people so that you may speak of the wonderful acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his amazing light. Once you weren't a people, but now you are God's people. Once you hadn't received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, since you are immigrants and strangers in the world, I urge that you avoid worldly, pleasure, worldly desires that wage war against your lives. Live honorably among the unbelievers. Today they defame you as if you were doing evil. But in the day when God visits to judge, they, to judge, they will glorify him because they have observed your honorable deeds. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. We say together, thanks be to God. We are gathered as the body of our Lord, and we worship him in one accord. God does not dwell in buildings made of stone. No God dwells within the hearts of us alone. And we're the hands, we're the feet, we're the ears, we're the eyes, by his blood, by he's the head, by his blood we are supplied. Let our lives touch in union's form which cannot be destroyed. We're made visible, the body of our Lord. And when our lives touch, and unions form which cannot be destroyed. We're made visible, the body of our Lord. The church building in which I grew up in Lancaster was originally named Broad Street Methodist Church. There was only one problem until our family had started there, and that being that Broad Street Methodist Church the congregation that was there, the congregation that we began joining together, the difficulty of, of this being Broad Street Methodist Church was that Broad Street Methodist Church was on Walnut Street. Simply, the congregation had outgrown their building sometime in the 1950s. And so they built another building in the same neighborhood, except it was only around the corner. And since I too was born in 1958, I often took notice of the cornerstone 
at, at the cornerstone that, of the new building because it too read 1958. The sanctuary, which when it was built, did not have stained glass windows, suggesting the congregation expected to build yet another, even larger sanctuary. This did not happen. And so it was decided sometime in the late 1970s to have stained glass windows designed, created, and installed for the sanctuary. I want to share with you that I feel very honored that it was a friend of mine, Frank Weidman, a stained glass artist who was hired as the one who would take on this awesome task. And back in March of this year, and now today, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be continuing to sit in front of a replica of one of the windows that Frank had created and made for the Broad Street Methodist Church building, which by then had become known as Christ United Methodist Church. This being a window that our family had placed in memory of our brother Ron, who died while in the Marine Corps in 1977. I share this with you today on this day of our two congregations celebrating such significant anniversaries. Frank for, Frank for Memorial serving in ministry for 150 years and Crescentville serving in ministry for 100 years. 150 years. 100 years. 250 years together in ministry. And as to the buildings, neither of the present sanctuaries are the original with the present Frankfurt Memorial Sanctuary dating to 1928 and the Crescentville Sanctuary dating to 1952. And both buildings have cornerstones to mark these significant dates. Significant because sanctuaries are just that, places deemed holy in which we gather to center ourselves in God. And yet if we're not careful, we can miss who and what God is really about. For God is not about the ornateness of our worship spaces nearly as much as God is interested in how much we understand God to be a part of us, and we part of God. As Peter in this passage we read this, this afternoon quotes from the prophet Isaiah, thus referring to Jesus as a cornerstone. We could understand this as Peter's way of marking this new way to God, namely Jesus Christ. Jesus, if embraced, keeps us from stumbling or falling. Jesus, as he referred to himself in John's gospel, as the way, truth, and the life to God. For those who don't recognize Jesus as the one from God, Stumbling and falling will occur because of their resistance to believe in what God has done and what God is doing. It's interesting when you think of it, that cornerstones only, only make known when something begins. We mark the beginning because we believe that what is to follow is important and special. Certainly that is the case in the lives of the congregations of Crescentville. Frankfurt Memorial. And few better words can be found than what Peter writes in the second chapter of his encouraging letter to Christians who would come to read it. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possession. You have become this people so that you so that you may speak of the wonderful acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his amazing light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you hadn't received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Peter begins this passage with the idea that those Christians who would read his letter would understand themselves to be part of something important, something special. That God was doing something in this world that would call us to see ourselves as a part of God. 
Jesus, the cornerstone of God, was worthy and able to uphold this beginning to where we, not 100 years later, not 150 years later, but some 2,000 years later, we can call ourselves a, a part of God's own possession. As special and as important as it is that our congregations have reached such significant anniversaries, how much more important is it is that we who consider ourselves a part of either or maybe even both continues to call us. God continues to call us to live lives of honor, service, and love. I think Naima had something to say about that earlier, and I thank you, Naima, for that sharing. As part of God in this way, we live as aliens, immigrants, Peter writes, strangers in the world. With or without a building, we are God's people. And I encourage you today to remember this. And on this day of anniversary, it is not just your individual anniversary or even just the anniversary of two congregations. Today we celebrate as any time we would celebrate that God is love. And we celebrate this love together and desire to make this love known in all we say and in all we do. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too, from all times and places. And when the people gather, they're singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus, all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. On anniversary days, on non-anniversary days, on every day that God gives us, let us continue to be and celebrate that we are indeed the church of God. Amen. Thank you, Randy. That was a great message and very appropriate for the day. Our affirmation of faith is the Apostles' Creed. Will you join me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our final hymn is, We Are the Church. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus, all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces. All colors and all ages, too, from all times and places. I am the church.
people gather. There's singing and there's praying. There's laughing and there's crying. Sometimes all of it saying, I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. Follow, follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. I tell you how much I have enjoyed the greetings that you have given and extended after services each Sunday. I, I even like the jokes. Um, they're pretty good. And I have one, I have one in, in kind of in going along with today's anniversary. You may have heard this, but it's a, it's a little riddle. When, what, where is the first car spoken of in the Bible? Well, that would be in Acts 2, where the early church was all together in one accord. <laughs> Thank you for laughing, Pastor Bob, because I have to also share with you, uh, Pastor Bob and, and Sue and Pat's laughing in the background of your jokes are, that's probably as funny as the jokes themselves. But really, I, I simply want to take a word, uh, uh, take a moment and thank all of you for your continued prayers for the accord the, the oneness that, that you have expressed to me in so many ways of, of knowing that you're continuing in worship together, but also extending concern and care for me and praying for me. I, this has been um, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, I guess. Uh, the doctor who told me I had cancer told me this procedure was very hard and he's, he's absolutely correct in that. But I'm glad to be feeling better now. And I think all of the side effects were the, which were the hardest thing to to deal with, um, I think for the most part, they're behind me. I'm, I'm hoping that that being that that is the case. But, but simply put, I, I want to thank all of you for your continued prayers, your continued good wishes and cards, and all the ways that you have extended your love and care to me. And, and thank you, Pastor Bob, for your continuing to lead the worship. And thank you to Pat and to Sue for all that you continue to do to make sure that we are able to gather together as the as the church that God has called us to be. Happy anniversary to all of you. I hope, I hope you take time in, in this day to think of those who have gone before us and to give thanks to, to God for them who have given us really the opportunity to continue to be here today. And I thank God for all of you who are here today as you continue the ministry that God's called us to in these places called Frankfurt Memorial and Crescentville. God bless you all. Thank you. We'll hopefully see one another before too long again. Thank you again. God bless. Thank you, Randy. Lord, we are family. It has been so good to see Pastor Randy back at the head of the table with his message for this special day of recognition. And we appreciate the participation by Naomi Jabati with our wonderful children's message and also those working behind the scenes to make this virtual program possible. We are the family of God. And as we go in love, may your peace go with us. Amen. Yeah. Day now and, and just uh, wish happy anniversary all around. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching. We Marching on, oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching on, oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching on, oh,